Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we observed the concept of Booth's algorithm for binary multiplication. In this session, we are going to observe the implementation of Booth's algorithm. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first we will observe the implementation of Booth's algorithm. Thereafter, we will observe the advantages and disadvantages of the same. Now, in the previous session, when we learned about the binary multiplication through Booth's algorithm, we observed that similar to partial sum approach, Booth's algorithm also focuses on the multiplier. And in this case, the multiplier that is Q has to be a sequence of ones having some leading and succeeding zeros. And the reason behind that is, these type of bit sequences can be decoded like this. Basically, if we subtract the place value of the last one of the sequence, from the place value which is right next to the place value of the first one of the sequence, we can obtain the multiplier. And using this particular format, we can perform m into q, that is the multiplication of the multiplicand and the multiplier, in this way. Basically, with 2 raised to the power 4, we are going to multiply the value of m, and with 2 raised to the power 1, that is the place value of the last one of the sequence, we are going to multiply the negative inverse of m. And finally, this particular addition will yield the result of m into q. Now, during the entire procedure, we observed we performed altogether 5 shifts. Now, why 5 shifts were used? Because in the multiplier, we had 5 bits. Now, we observe that the number of shifts are actually similar to the partial sum approach. However, the number of additions actually are reduced. In the partial sum approach, we perform the addition based on the number of ones in the multiplier. But in case of Booth's algorithm, we are going to perform the addition only twice. So, this is basically the concept of Booth's algorithm. Let's observe the implementation today. Now, first we will have a register for the multiplicand. Now, in this particular case, we have 5 bits for multiplicand. So, we are going to have a 5-bit register. And we are going to name that register M only. Thereafter, we will use a special purpose register called the accumulator. Now, regarding accumulator and its functionalities, we will get to know about in our later chapters. However, for now, just remember that accumulator is a special purpose register which enables us to perform the operations on the contents of this particular register. So basically, whatever we store in accumulator, we can perform the operations on that and also the result will be stored in the accumulator itself. This is the speciality of this particular register. Now the accumulator is also going to have same number of bits as M or Q, that is 5 in this case, and it will be initialized with all zeros. Now for the multiplier Q, we are going to have another 5-bit register. And we will initialize this particular register with the value 01110. Now finally, we will use another flip-flop that is 1-bit memory cell, which we are going to name as Q-1. Now why we are naming it Q-1? This is Q, right? So if we name this cell as Q0, this one as Q1, then it becomes Q2, Q3, Q4. Keeping that uniformity, we are naming this Q-1. And we are going to initialize it with the value 0. Now, the operations will be performed on this entire bit sequence. And finally, the result will be available in these two registers. Now, if you remember, when we perform m into q, at the worst case scenario, the result of m into q can be 2n, right? where n being the number of bits in either q, that is the multiplier, or the multiplicand, which is also of the same number of bits. Now, in this particular case, the m and q are of 5 bits each. So, together, 5 plus 5, that is 10 bits, or to be specific, these 10 bits are going to yield the result by the end of the operations. Now, the operations will be performed based on the bits available in these two memory cells, that is the LSB of q, and Q minus 1. Now let me illustrate the operations. Now think about it. With Q LSB and Q minus 1, that is 2 bits, we can have only 4 different combinations, that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 
Now we are going to perform m into q in this way. However, the multiplier bits, we are going to traverse them from right to left. Now think about it, when we have 0, 0, that means we are here. We are yet to begin this sequence of 1's. So when we have 0, 0, the operations to be performed is arithmetic right shift. Now why arithmetic right shift? Think about it, we are traversing the multiplier from right to left. And all the subsequent operations will be determined based on the content of these two memory cells. So this is the reason why we are performing arithmetic right shift. Now think about it, once we are done with all the zeros, we will come across the sequence of ones. And where does it begin? In this particular place. That is, when q lsb is 1 and q minus 1 is 0. Now at this particular point, we are supposed to perform this, right? That is, with 2 raised to the power i, we are going to multiply the negative inverse of m. And that is the reason why we are going to perform this. That is, the content of the accumulator will be added with the negative inverse of m. And thereafter, we will perform arithmetic right shift once more. Now, this arithmetic right shift is actually happening because we need to perform the multiplication. Now, once we begin the sequence of ones, we will come across only ones. So, in that particular case, we are going to perform again arithmetic right shifts. Now, once the sequence of ones are gone, we will come across this particular sequence. That is, q lsb will be 0 and q minus 1 will be 1, denoting the last one in the sequence of ones. Now, we are going to perform this. So, with the content of accumulator, we are going to add the value stored in m. And thereafter, we will perform arithmetic right shift once more. Now, why this is happening? Because we are going to multiply the value of m with 2 raised to the power j, that is, the place value of this bit. Anyway, these operations will be more clear as soon as we start performing them. So, let's begin. This is the initial situation of the bit sequence. Observe, we have 0, 0. Now, when it is 0, 0, we are supposed to perform arithmetic right shift. Now, remember one thing. In Booth's algorithm, we are using the negative inverse of a value. So, whenever we perform the shifts, we should remember these shifts are to be performed keeping the sign bit extension of two's complement numbers in mind. That is, we are going to shift all the bits towards the right by one cell. However, whatever we had in the MSB's place, we are just going to copy them in the remaining cells. Now, observe these two bits. It is 1, 0. Now, when it is 1, 0, we are supposed to perform the addition between m bar, that is the negative inverse of m, and the content of the accumulator. Now, look at the value of m. It is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, we need the 2's complement of m. So, we are going to traverse the m from right to left. And this is the first one. So, this will be retained. Now, thereafter, all the bits from the LSB towards the MSB will be toggled. Right? So, we are finally getting the m inverse as 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's perform the addition. Here, the result will also be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, what about the remaining memory cells? The bits will remain the same. Now, we are only done with this particular portion of the operation. We are yet to perform ARS. So, let's perform that. So, we are going to perform arithmetic right shift by one cell. And thereafter, we will keep the MSB in the remaining cell. Now, observe these two bits. It is 1, 1. Now, in case of 1, 1, we are going to perform arithmetic right shift only. So, let's do that. We will shift it and the MSB will be placed in here. Now, look at these two bits. It is 1, 1 again. Basically, we are running through these sequence of ones, right? So, we are going to perform arithmetic right shift once more. So, let's do that. Now, observe these two bits. These are 0, 1. So, this is 0, 1, which denotes the end of the sequence of 1's, right? So, we are going to add the accumulator's content with m and then again store the result in accumulator itself. So, let's do that. Now, 0 plus 1 will give us 1. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So, we will have 0 as sum and the carry 1 will be added with this one, resulting in 1, 0. 1, 0 plus 0 will give us 0 as sum and 1 as carry. Now, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1, 1 in binary. So, 1 we will have as sum 
and the carry one will be added with this one resulting in one zero. Now one zero plus zero will give us one zero. Now if you remember this is two's complement addition. So basically this one can be ignored. Now what about the rest of the memory cells? The bits will remain the same. Now we are only done with this particular portion. We are yet to perform the ARS. So let's perform the arithmetic right shift. So basically we will shift all the places towards the right ones. And the MSB will be placed in here. And now we have reached in here. So the operation is complete. Observe. Here we obtained this result. And here we obtained this one. Both are similar, right? The only difference is here we have one more MSB, which by the way is zero, which doesn't affect the result at all. And remember, I told you in the beginning, the result of the entire operation we are going to obtain through the contents of these two registers, didn't I? So basically we performed arithmetic right shift all the times. Observe, here in the multiplier we had 5 bits, right? This is the result of the first ARS. This is the result of the second. This is the result of the third. This is the result of the fourth. And this is the result of the fifth ARS, right? So we performed 5 shifts and only 2 additions. So basically, this is our configuration. We need an accumulator, another register Q, and a flip flop named Q minus 1. And these are the operations to be performed. So let's now observe the Boots algorithms flowchart. So we are going to start. Now, once we start, thereafter we will initialize the accumulator with 0, the flip flop Q minus 1 with 0 as well. In the register M, we are going to store the multiplicand that we have done in here. Thereafter, in the register Q, we are going to store the multiplier and finally we will have another register storing the count which is N, that is the number of bits in the multiplier. Now, once the inputs are taken, thereafter we will perform this, that is we are going to check the bits Q0 and Q-1, that is the Q LSB least significant bit of Q and Q-1, that is this flip-flop. Now, in case these two are either 0, 0 or 1, 1, in that case, we are going to perform the arithmetic right shift on the contents of the accumulator Q and the flip-flop Q-1. And also, we are going to reduce the value of count by 1. Now, if the value of Q0 and Q-1 is 0, 1, that is, we are in here, that is the end of the sequence. In that case, that will reflect this operation. That is, we are going to store in the accumulator the content of the accumulator and the addition of the M, that is, the multiplicand. Now, in case the content of Q0 and Q-1 is 1, 0, which actually indicates the beginning of the sequence of 1s, in that case, we are going to store in the accumulator the contents of the accumulator and addition of that, the negative inverse of the M, which can also be stated as ACC, that is the content of the accumulator, minus the multiplicand, right? Now, in both the cases, we are supposed to perform arithmetic right shift of accumulator Q and Q-1 after we perform the operations, aren't we? Now, once this is done, we are going to check whether the count has become zero or not. Because remember, we are traversing the bits of multiplier from right to left. So, the more we push towards the left, we are supposed to decrease the value of count, which will eventually become zero, right? So, until it becomes 0, that is no, we will keep on repeating this. And once it becomes 0, then we are going to stop the process and the result will be available in the content of these two registers, that is accumulator and Q. So, this is how the concept of Boots algorithm is implemented. Let's now observe the advantages. Now, using Boots algorithm, we actually can perform sign multiplications. Now, how is so? Think about it. We are performing M into Q, right? So in M, if we have a negative number, in that case, with 2 raised to the power J, we will multiply the negative inverse of M. And with 2 raised to the power I, we will multiply the negative inverse of the negative inverse of M, which is nothing but M itself. So yes, Booth's algorithm can perform sign multiplications. Now it actually performs better if negative numbers are involved. Now, why is so? Think about it. A number like this is actually minus 7. Now, in case of Booth's algorithm, whenever we come across 1, 1, we just keep on performing arithmetic right shift. 
Therefore, this entire sequence of ones will come down to the last one seamlessly when we operate in Booth's algorithm. Now, finally, here we have reduced number of operations. Basically, the number of shifts will be as same as the number of bits in the multiplier that is the value of n. However, we are going to perform two additions only, once in here and once in here, which is actually two's complement addition, isn't it? So, this is all the advantages. Now, coming to the disadvantage, it only has got one. That is, the performance decreases if Q is a sequence like this. That is, a sequence of alternating ones and zeros. This are going to be a little bit tricky to deal with in case of Booth's algorithm. And that's the only disadvantage. So, in this session, we first observed the implementation of Booth's algorithm. Thereafter, we came across the advantages and the disadvantages. Well, to be honest, only a single disadvantage, right? Alright people, that will be all for this session. With this session, we end the journey of binary multiplication. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to learn about the binary division procedures. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.